you're going to hear the different voice, right? It's hard to preach in English, it was just not my town, but I will try. And uh, today, Moses' pastor said, okay, would you preaching, because this is one, is a kind of a topic of preaching, and you can choose the one. I feel like uh, we need to turn the Gospel Matthew again. And we'll read in the time coming. But I want to see what is the life in the hope. A couple years ago, I passing through the Atlanta airport. You know in Florida, if you travel any place, you have to go through Atlanta. There's a big ad that's track my eyes. That said, real man, real depression. All these real names is the pilot, doctors, and the college kids and the retired engineer. They're all pretty good. I'm a middle class, upper class. There should be some kind of elite that will be hopeful. But they're real depression to all those three men. They had a name, it strike me. Think about the bad news recently. I think Moses already mentioned the last the Friday we announced we had been reported more than eight hundred thousand. In fact, in the Freud alone, one day. So, whole world in this academic situation, maybe some of us will be infected. There's a half year passing. I think the pandemic will be with us where we go. Maybe some person already had immune system strong. You never know. This is the past. The Months we had this uh, protesting, we are freedom country, and uh, people do radical things, mobs do things. And until last week, people can take this monument. They say something. The president can be gone. Maybe you, you may not agree with his view, but to do this one is really to the disorder. The God created order, so. As you guys, I think your heart maybe also turmoil, right? Turmoil, and you ask, okay, I go to college, I go to the high school very soon. How I be find myself in this world, and uh, maybe someday I will be depressed. I'll be someday totally give up. You know, as you hear all this news, mostly it's bad. Of course, you can turn this off. I don't watch news. I don't hear news. But it is still part of reality, right? So we may lose hope. We may be pressured to some extent that we cannot say, okay, I cannot get up in the morning, right? So this is our situation to show this deepest problem, another pandemic. I will call this depression, right? So because in the different crisis, people's weakness, Vulnerable will show up, just be exposed by this crisis. I read the news like 15% the people in the U.S., our youth, suffer this uh, depression, all the different level. This is a big need in this land. Uh, there's a statistics that a, a human being, if you're alive, uh, 10, is maybe 4 out of 10, you'll get a depression. I don't believe that when I was in college, my friends was he get depression. I said, what happened to you? You're so be strong. I was laughing until I get a seminary. This is my first depression. So much reading, so much going on. So in this land, in this situation, the depression will be becoming more and more. This is our I, I will call this the land of the soul with the depression. The soul in the wilderness. So how we deal with the situation? Are you able to give me a prescription? If you go to medical school, can you? Yes, maybe you can use this one. Some people say the depression is the silent killer. This is true. Uh, I read some small bullets. It's from Italy. He said that this pandemic is almost like a atomic bomb without a sound. This ancient story I read, this is very interesting. This is death come walking into a particular town and uh, 
the people the guarding the town meet him to ask, what are you going to do? The death said to him, I'm going to kill 10,000 people. And the man said, this is terrible, terrible news. And the death said, well, this is the way it is. This is my job. The so day passed. The man warned everybody in the town that death had a plan. 10,000 people will die. But in the very end of the day, he met his death. He said, you say you're going to kill 10,000, but you're not trustworthy. You're a liar because we had 70,000 people die. The death explained and said, okay, I only killed 10,000. Rest of them killed by themselves by fear. Well, I know this is a story, maybe exaggeration, but it is happening in this land. So I have to, we have to ask ourselves as a Christian, in this depression situation, where's the hope? Does ancient Bible give a hope? Is it absolute? Um, does the Bible may be too far away from us? Does God is still sovereign? Julia, when he pray, when she prayed, she said that we always forgot that God is still sovereign. Does we always say, as Christians said, okay, Jesus is the answer. How he is specifically answer us in this situation? So I want to ask two questions. First, how people will get into the depression in this crisis? Why they cannot get out? Secondly, if people can go out, get into it, had a consequence? What, the, what is the hope? Does the Bible give us hope? Does Jesus had prescription? Or our hope maybe go to the drugs? I know in the U.S., I think you can have a lot of people eating different kinds of medicine. Some is good, some is not. But we use this when dealing our symptoms, right? This become very habitual since. So, how are we dealing with our body, our soul? Because as the modern science, we find a lot of things about our body and the soul. It's very intimately connected, more than we see before. Even in the Jesus time, that also had a fear, right? In the Matthew 6, on the, from the verse 16 on to the end, that Jesus, in this part of his uh, well-known sermon, Sermon of the Mount, right? He gave this three type of uh, pitfall, I always call is a sickness. He gave a prescription. In the pitfall, he gave a rescue plan. So I want to see this one. Um, would you like open the Bible and listen to me read this one? Are we standing? Uh, the Matthew 6 from the verse 6 to 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on the earth where the mouth and rust destroy and where the thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourself treasures in heaven where neither mouth or rust destroys or where the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, where your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, and your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is you, in you is the darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, or either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devolved to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, know about your body, what we will put on. Eat not life more than food, and the body more than closing. Look at the birds in the air. They either they neither sow or nor reap or nor gather in the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than them? And which of you, by being anxious, can add the single hour to his spent life? And why are you anxious about the closing? Consider the lilies 
of the field, how they grow, they either turn or spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, the king, uh, in his glory, was not arrayed like one of those. But if God so closes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow will throw it in the oven, will he not much more close you, O oh, you a little face? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, and what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all the saints, and you, Heavenly Father, knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things will be added to you. Therefore, listen to this, do not be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. What a precious word for this time of age. Help us to see your prescription to our trouble. In Christ's name we pray. Please be seated. When you read this one, you may be thinking, well, this is nothing to do with anxious or depression, right? But if you read carefully on the 25th, he said, therefore I will tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or drink, and you, what you will put on. So it is about depression, about our worries, anxious. If you look at the verse 29 to the 24, you find that Jesus gave us pretty concise diagnosis our situation. Three things he exposed, our three pitiful. I would say the first is our value pitiful. He's basically in the 19th that do not lay up yourself the treasures on the earth where the moth and the rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. And the second, he will talk about life word view had a pitfall. People will trap into different things. Like we cannot see, um, we will wandering and we lost the direction. The eye is the lamp of the body. And the 26 is said, the uh, 26, three. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will fall of the darkness, right? The third thing is the belief pitfall. Will be become the slave of the money or other thing become our master, we believe in the money. It's become our system. One on the 24th said, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and the money. You can see we're going to talk about the three things. It's always our symptoms, symptoms, symptoms to when we're dealing with the situations. is the value, life word of view, and belief. This is when we depart from the God of creation purpose we are alienated from himself and people into the darkness and will interpret everything wrong. Interpret value wrong, interpret the word view wrong, interpret your beliefs wrong. So that's what we're going to see. This is our symptoms. We're going to have the three things. We have to see our treasure or value. What is wrong? Every rational human being will tell us Worry have a no use, right? But some people said, I was born to be a worry man. I will worry if we miss my class, I worry to miss my, my exercise or miss my friends. Or my parents uh, said, I was born to be a worry. Okay, we pie up white Chinese, particularly Asian Chinese. We like to pie up a lot of things because we don't have security. In the US word, uh, security is a bond and those ways, I think is a revealing. I remember when I, as a pastor, one of the UCF grads, he, it was like a 2010, he sent a lot of resume because he grew up, could graduate, and he didn't get answers. He's got a worry words, finally one day to get an answer, people say, I want to interview. He was so panicked, he cannot answer. I mean, the people, of course, that's, that's he tell me uh, later on, of course. So worry is like rolling chair. They give you something to do and would get you anywhere. This is tr really true. 
why we get worried, I think we put our trust in wrong places. In 19, they say very clear, do not lay up your self treasure on the earth. The mob thrust will go on and deceive will stealing. But lay your treasure on the heaven. Then no mouth on rocks, no stealing. He was contrasted with two things. Where you put, what is treasure? Treasure is your most treasured man, people, all your thing, right? Think about your family, think of your friends, maybe your treasure. But from the eternal point of view, I think Jesus said there's two places we put our treasure. On this earth or on the heaven. One is symbolize the temporal, always change. Another symbolize eternal, unchanged, perfect. I think that was a part of a, Jesus put this uh, very quickly, choose contrast heaven and the earth, seeking security and uh, protection is legitimate, right? Everybody should do that. But where is our ultimately treasure, ultimately security? If you take this passing world as your ultimate goal, one day I can guarantee where you're young or you're old will disappoint, very disappoint. For this reason, because Jesus said this world will pass in what way? I think it's very true. Sometimes in this age, I think eternity is not become our view. We always very transcend, follow what happened in this world. What is trend? What is another new thing, right? As a young people, I myself been young before. What is wrong places? I found very interesting. When people more digging into the earthly treasure as their security, they need more because they find out I now keep up with Jews. He had more house, more security. I need more earthly things to protect what I already got. So that's what anxiety come out. So that's why in, in the gospel look, they said, okay, I already born and what I do. And the God said, well, if I take your soul, where are you gonna another ball? He was always thinking like, get a pile up. I, this is a very long old, old story, Bill Gates, he's old, he changed, I think, some way. When he was a very ambitious businessman, he's very insecure. I read in Time magazine how his house was secured by gun and by all those cameras long before. Why he do the business buying those young startup company? Maybe, yes, he wants to advance, but he tell the secret, he said, I need to buy before they dominate me. He know how he started from the garage. On this how he's driven until he started his like church company and uh, gave the money to the poor. I think this is a very revealing story. Jesus teaching. I think of our parents uh, as you maybe always struggle. I mean Chinese are too much pie up. They always said, okay, uh, there's two things. Like, let me sing Chinese first. Uh, I don't know what I say that. In some extent, it's not wrong. I mean, yes, we need the money in case. We need the children to, when we get older, take care of us. So, but they are really horizontally thinking the money, position, power, and the relationship will save us. When those things are broken, the worry will come because they're not eternal. But even you get successful, like Bill Gates, okay? You may not be get rid of uh, depression. I mean, he, why he always go to working on Sunday? He said, because nobody working on Sunday already ahead of themselves, <laughs> rest of people. <laughs> so you can see, uh, it's very interesting. Why we lost the hope? Because we are looking wrong places to find hope and security. What is the life? What is the right place? Jesus said, treasure in the heaven. If people get worried too much because they're looking in the wrong place to get security, because they know they didn't control this one, they didn't go to turn to the eternal Father, this is He created us and He redeeming us. 
as we separated from him, we are had all this type of symptom. Think about this. If you had billionaire as your father, you had a superman as your bodyguard, what do you think? You have no worry, right? Think about it, right? Oh no, you grew up in the US. I, I remember when I my children was young, I said, money? I don't worry about money. You always go to the bank, the machine get money. I'll say, wow. So when he get now, he get a job, he had children, he start worry, right? <laughs> he realized that not an automatic machine. You have to earn it. So our situation, if you thinking father is your superman, thinking he is the treasure, prepare for you in the future, restore those things. So this have to see ourselves, who you are. This is on the twenty fifth, like a is it not life more than food, the body more than clothing? He compared. If God clothing is not important, the grass and give the bird the, the food, will he not more clothing you or your little face? Think about it. If God gave the life more important than the food, right? He will give you a clothes of this one. If he treasure about the more important as the children of God, does he will take care of the rest of the stuff? But we are so worried about the rest of the stuff, forget who we are. I think this is one. If the grass, God portray him. I think this is decoration. If you look, I know some of you know more than I do. If you use the telescope, look at the, the flower, and compare this, it looks pretty good closing. The flower fabric is more beautiful, more um, uh, knitted together. Right? That's what Solomon said. Even Solomon had this golden age, all the treasures coming, but compared to flower, only even one day. That was much beautiful. That's a God who cared about flower. Jesus is a wonderful counselor. As we falling into the same, we forgot this. As we redeemed, remember we are created by Creator. We are redeemed by Jesus' blood. Otherwise, you're very sad. Um, people say, for those not knowing Christ, they will do two things in the whole life. Before the 40, they pile up in case they get later. And the later they get a lot of money, then they have to use all the money to heal this house. So first 40 years, you use their house for money, Last 40 years, you use your money for house. What is a trap? That's why I'm talking we are trapped in this world. But Jesus is a really wonderful counselor. He, for those who are trapped in the depression, He knows, oh, don't worry, don't worry. His first antidote is affirming your value in God. You are image of God. You are image bearer. You are redeeming by Him. What a precious blood. We need to listen to him. We need to learn to listen. I think sometimes when we go to some kind of depression, then because we are thinking, we bombarded all this negative stuff, then our thought, our emotion controlled by them, then go deep and deep, right? Down and down. That's why you need to listen. That's why I choose in the, the Psalm 40, I mean, 43 and 42 and 43 is all very good. When you get that situation, read that one, preaching to yourself. You need to listen to God, not listen to yourself. Preaching to yourself by word. So if you're not convinced, this one, you are like action. Right? The young people like action. Show me you really care. How I know, how do I know God care me? I didn't feel it. Well, I want you to see the fact and you will fear it. In Romans 8, on the say this, if God for us, I think last week we seen this one, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son is more treasure, right? But he gave up for all of us, how will he now also with him gracious give us all things? So that's the treasure and the verse last important. If God gave his precious son, 
do you think he will forget those less important things? The same argument of Paul with follow Jesus. In this challenge, in this our life turbulence, where is your treasure? Where is your life treasure? Most you thinking in the daily life actually is index what you treasure more, right? Think about that one. So let me summarize this part. Whether your treasure on the earth, on the heaven, Jesus kind of gave a summary for where your treasure is, there it is your heart will be. So where your treasure is, your heart will be. In other words, if your treasure is really on the earthly thing, because it's temporal, will pass away, it's not secure, then you are going to one day go into this turmoil, this depression. However, if your treasure the more is on the heaven, that's indicated eternal, unchanging, is not able to shake by anything. So now your heart is secure and your body will secure. You're not belong yourself, you belong to God. I know we are using um, the Westminster Catechism. Sometimes we, I always exchange Hadabal. You know Hadabal Catechism also well known. In the first one, he said this, what is your only comfort in life and the death? The answer is this, you probably don't know. That is, I'm not my own, but belong my body and soul in life and death to my faithful Savior Jesus. This is very good. We have like uh, our first catechism, so my life is glorifying God, enjoying Him, and this, this head of catechism, my life and death belong to Him. Sometimes not belong to yourself. It is the good news, right? I think more about this one. I think this is really the good news. This is much secure than I control my life, right? So if you do this way, as a heavenly minded, you can actually bring that eternal security into your daily life. Your index of housing, I think, is becoming more and more. And this is what Jesus said. You are in this world, not of this world. Okay? Because you are treasured by God. You are an image of God. And even redeemed one, right? Let's go second part. What is our life word view? Why we sometimes like uh, uh, like elephant in the room, we, we find a tail, we say, okay, this world is tail, and we find he's a big ear. We say, oh, this world is a flat. Okay, this is our situation, right? So Jesus not only point us our value system wrong uh, in, on this earth, but we he started pointing another fact why we get depression because our world view is wrong in the 23 or 22 he said i the eye is the lamp of the body so if your eye is healthy the whole body will full of the light but if your eye is bad your whole body will be full of the darkness if then the light in you is the darkness how great is the darkness now you will grow up one day you will go to college or you go to the high school i remember my daughter go to high school said, this is like, like Disney. Because when you're in middle school, it's a pretty small. High school is pretty concentrated. Get like a thousand people. When you go to the college, wait a second, too many people, right? I uh, know right now the situation is different to you are, but you know what I mean. The new situation that make you get lost, right? In this situation, you will say, where I am? Because uh, Sometimes in a different stage of life, maybe first one you treasure about your grades because things are that important. Then you finish your school, people say, well, grades doesn't matter. Your performances matter. So you, you basically keep changing this, what is the matter? Then you're confused, right? Is it right? So that means the word view. You need to have an anchor. The word view, who are you, will determine um, what do you view things. You sometimes put this up, put that down, then you are always juggling. The life is a balance, yes. So how you see, how your vision, I mean spiritual vision, word view vision. See yourself, see this world, see heaven and earth, hell, all this one. So if you, Jesus said, if you light 
inside is the dark, your world view is dark. If light, dark, how great is the darkness? Uh, in the U.S., there's always a comment, right? He can cheat everybody and get, give you wrong information. Most of the comment is not really smart, but most people be trapped by comment. It's like they got a PhD, they had the money. Why they they can be conned? Because they're in darkness. They want the money, want to get fame. The con was that that's an easy way to get it. Con always try. You don't think a con is like a cheap way. Sometimes the con is really give us wrong value. Then you wow. Later on you wake up. I've been con by twenty years or thirty years. Okay, this is what. You know, you always go to the, everybody had glasses. I think you don't have, you don't have. Do you have like a, a, a maybe I can't contact. Okay, so you had the experience go to your medical doctor, the, the eye doctor. He always say, can you see this one? Is E or K or L? What are you keep doing until you get a 20 vision, right? So I'm asking when Jesus said this one, I think he do the spiritual checkup. Can you see eternal perspective about this world, about yourself? So this is the, how far you can see from 22, I mean verse 22, can you see the verse 33? He said, first seeking your kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that we added. This is what the life word view, right? Need, you and I need established word view. It's much more than before. I remember when Craig and I was doing the pastoral ministry, we gave like a truth project. Is the focus on family. I did a very good truth project. Try to establish the use about the word view. I think this is, this is still in the library. Maybe sometimes we can use. I think it's really good to establish word view. Word view always like, a, okay, who I am, where I'm coming, where I'm going, who is God? Does he's good, he's kind, or he's evil, right? People will ask. So how will you do this? This is a word view question. When you know you are who you are, then you kind of know what you do. The being always before the doing, before the having. Sometimes we always upside down. We say our performance is our achievement. We forget the reference. So our achievement is God blessing. But you need to put it in good perspective. You need to be around the center, around Him. Otherwise, you will lose the perspective. When you get a depression, I think you always exaggeration, exaggerate what happened to you, right? Whole world is against me. It's like everything is not, even I drinking water, water is like making my teeth sore, right? This is your parents would say this one. So what do you do this? Jesus, start, establish, not only the value in the God, but also give us perspective of the word view, established according to the Bible. The word view is so many, right? Let me just name some of you. I think you already know this one. One will be say this, okay, this universe as it is, just material. No spiritual, this is it. So when I grew up, that's my word view, okay? The Marxism, all this one coming. Second one, well, God is just in this one. Everything is good. It's like Hinduism. Like this is a, their word view. Another one, even in our founding father, some is a real Christian, some is not. So like that will hold in this. Like Franklin, Jack, Jeff, Jefferson, all kind of this. What that means, like God is there and the word is here. But when he created it, he's just like, a, he lived this a word alone according to their past. So like a clock, right? You set up a clock, the clock will run it. But what is the big word view? Against all these three I'm mentioning, this is God, yes, distinguished from creation, but there's a connection, right? He cared his creation. He is the Lord in time, above time. Uh, let me give you one example of why I think God control and God care this. I love you, you guys saying, Moses, you're very good. God is strong, kind. This is what God control. He's different from other. He can have a miracle because he control the universe open to him, but he can change the clock. Most time he don't. But he's care. When I was a 
become a Christian, I realized one thing, I'm a scientist, like most of your parents here. I always think I'm a physicist. So if you are, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the water, you, you see mostly, like, if you are material, is if a solid is more heavy, more dense, right? You get a little bit less dense, you get air, you should be less. But the water is very different. Like a solid ice can be floating on the water. I was didn't understand until I read in some I realized this is a father's world. He cares. Think about it. If like a well, God is simply generally make a solid more heavy, what happened? All the river will frozen. All the sea will frozen. All the animal, the sea will die. I realize his care is beyond my imagination. This is so simple. But this is why I think God has a personal God. He cared his creation. <laughs> like their relationship. Okay. So that's why important Jesus said, okay, all you had all the worries, but seeking his kingdom first and his righteous rest of stuff will add on you. Through Jesus coming, his death and the resurrection. He really established the kingdom here. We already had this catechism discussion. Our church in this time, before he come in the final time, we always had the trouble. The key is the one trouble coming, where you turn. You know, it turns out, okay, U.S. will save me, Trump will save me, all Biden will save me, whatever the one. If you put your bet wrong, you will be disappointed one day. But if you bet in the right person, you know who he is, right? One day we will come here to fix everything. That's if you put your money betting on that. You will not. Let me read one story I read. I never forgot. It's Julius Apostate. He is a king of the Roman Empire during the 4th century. That was almost Roman, almost died. The Christian his kingdom is growing. And this was, he was so anxious because their people turned away from there. A Roman gods that turned to the Jesus, turned to the God, Father in Jesus, in, in the Bible. So when he did this one, he said Jesus, he said all the Christian, he said all the Christian is atheist. You know that, right? This is what his notes. He said atheist, the Christian faith, has been specifically advanced through the loving service rendered to the stranger and through their care of the burial of the dead. It is a scandal that is no single Jew who is a beggar and that the godless Galilee, he talked about Christian Galilee, the godless, care not only their own poor, but for ours as well. Why those who belong to us look at in vain for help that we should render them. You see, that the state is kind of no ability, but the church take care of the poor, even non-believer. Even apostate Julius is drawn by this phenomenon, although he against Christianity. That's our faith. If we can show that our Father is good through our good deeds, then the world has a different impact. Carson, he wrote this. He said, Christian based on the faith had that value and word view make their life and behavior had a mark, that mark is made in the kingdom of God. It's not by made in China, made in the U.S. This is the mark. Well, you can see our life view will have impact to yourself and the rest of the people, right? Are you great? And can rescue you in a difficult time, in a crisis like this. Well, as the kingdom, people of the kingdom of heaven, you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, will take care of himself. The last thing I will share is your belief system. If you are wrong in treasure, your life view will be get you a wrong situation, devastating. But if your belief system is wrong, you get it even worse. We start with big value system, we go to the world view, now we go to our belief. This is much more than the first two things I mentioned. If you choose the wrong master, <laughs> Think about that. Wrong master. Who is your master? 
Think about that. On the verse 24, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate one or love another, or he will devote to one and despise another. You cannot serve God and money. In this world, you always had competing. Money is one of the one to represent the power of this world to competing with God. Jesus mentioned that. This Jesus now said, okay, you cannot two jobs, you can do the tutor, you can do the pastoral ministry. I always give him two jobs. No, no, no. This, he said, okay, God is one. You cannot serve two master. Sometimes as Christian, we actually not in the loud voice, we're serving ourselves, serving other things, but sometimes we trap into serving another master implicitly. As we created, God designed only one master himself. He, for his reason, created us. If you're looking outside him as your master, that's what's worship about. I think you mentioned that, that sermon in the very end of the uh, uh, first Timothy. Um, so if you are seeking other things as your master, I think in this land, getting to the too much left, in my view, is something getting more like a cultural revolution in China. You need to ask your parents about this one. I think the, the younger one may not know what is tyranny without order, without uh, making the self-freedom. Uh, seeking the freedom actually lost the freedom because the in the communist regime, there is anthems, the cult, there is no redeemer. We will be the master of this world. According to the Christian Bible, there is only one, we are servant. We are stewardship of this good, good care creation. Care since we will never be a master. So in this land, I think in America, there's a lot of idols. We put an idol is a pretty good way, right? American idol? I mean, we don't think about this. Normally, in the biblical world, this is a pretty bad world, but we, we love it, adore the idol. Uh, we sometimes Christians will say, oh, I adore my pastor Moses for preaching so good. He's my idol? No, of course he's not. But we, we use this teasingly. Whether it's North America or Asia, I think the prevalent is the materialism. Do you see the Asian floor in the movie? Okay, that movie is very revealing. I read one book, Debbie Henderson, it's Culture Shift. He said this, in our generation, there's three characters. Consumerless, entertainment, then the loner. We always think, okay, we get two things. In the very end, every people get very lonely. Why? Most people go where? Think about the US, before this pandemic. You think go to Disney, go to the uh, Niagara Four, or go to Great Wall of China, you're wrong. Most people are attracted to the mall, Millennium Mall, or American Mall. This is statistics. Most people are attracted to the mall. That's why. When we get unhappy, we go to the mall. When we get lonely, we go to the mall. When we have nothing to do, we go to the mall. That's why we try to use this one to kill our loneliness. Do you experience that? Maybe not that you're too young. I, I preaching over your head. But you know sometimes we use up it's not it's good gathering, go there. But I think that's the most people think that will solve our problem. People cannot get it, they will be minded and cannot get it, eventually they will depress. That's how they excellent the situation. So even Christian go to depression. Why psalmist said that? David had depression, Israel had. So Jesus gave the third antidote. He said, if you had new master, this master will give you new order, new meaning of the life. He said is a, in, in this one, he's seeking the kingdom first. He said this before that, for Gentiles seeking after all the saints, secondary saints. But he said, Heavenly Father, know that you need all. So seeking first the kingdom and the righteousness, all things we added. So Jesus said, our heart is wrong, our mind is wrong, right? He pointed us, we are in the wrong place to seeking. If who control your heart, 
will control your life and the destiny. Are you great? Who control your mind? So in the Luke 6, Jesus said this, good person out of his good treasure is hard to produce good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure produce evil. For out of abundance of heart, his mouth speak. So permanent change have to start from heart. Let me see quickly how you can change, not a temporary fix like a bandit. How you change? There's a two exchanges happening in our life. Let me quickly mention the first one, in the Romans 1, and the Paul said Romans 1, he said, after we exchange God's glory, what happened? Although they know God, in verse 11, they did not honor Him as God given thanks to Him, but they become fertile in their thinking, and the foolish heart of the dark claim be wise and become a fool. Exchanging glory of me model God for image and simply model man, bird, animal, and the creeping things. Therefore, God gave up the last of the heart. You can see this is the first exchange in the fall. Entire human race into that situation. You and me in that moment before. I don't know if you are still there. If you're still there, it's very dangerous. So as we created, this is what we we said. Human heart is a factory for idol, factory of the idols. Calvin said that, right? You can generate a lot of things from the heart. But who control you? The Jesus said that, seeking the kingdom first. And the Paul said in his righteousness, Paul said that. In the following, the Romans, even before, in that Romans we, we read in the 16, he said, I don't share the gospel power of God, save, save salvation to everyone believe, for it's Jew and also Gentile, us. Then reveal the righteousness shall live by faith. Now he go to the chapter 15, I mean on the 5, you read chapter 6, right? But before the 6, he, he said this, how the righteousness of Jesus become our heart already changed, the corruption changing. Our heart become a power to change our future, become our ever renewed foundation. In the in the five, chapter five, verse I just read several. Twelve said, just as a sin into this world through the one man. This is this is a Paul in, interpret what uh, uh, Jesus said. And the death through the sin, and the death spread all human beings because all sin, all people sin. Then in verse seventeen, he said. Because of man transpires, that's rain, remember, one of such more, those who receive abundant grace and free gift of righteous rain in the life through one man, Jesus. Then in the 18th, he said, therefore, one trespass, leading condemnation of all men, and the one act, righteous, lead justification of life of all men. You see that, the another exchange Paul mentioning here, in the chapter 1, he said, exchanging God's glory foretell this world, corruption. Now he said, exchange in righteousness to God in Jesus. He did it one time for all, then you will be changed. So this two exchange, I want to drill your heart, your mind. So important as you are becoming a Christian. I know you are, but sometimes our life, we also do the reverse exchange, right? So, okay, we're thinking other things more important and Christ, His righteousness. His kingdom less important than my world. So that's our situation. So that's why the thing sometimes when we come into the church, uh, I really admire you, not people, everybody here, but you are here. I was so thrilled. The people here probably more than people in the main century. I, I go there, but today maybe more, I don't know. But sometimes when we serving God, we for God, we are serving Him. Other things become a more priority. How we appearance, how my notes, how my singing, how my prayer, how my reading sounds like, right? This is a, sometimes we need to care for this one, but you need to say, cast my worries to God. He is one I worship, one voice to Him. So He's our Redeemer because sin always is stealing God's glory and give to ourselves. That's why Jesus firmly says, seeking His kingdom first, His righteousness. Everything will settle. Everything will settle. 
remember these two exchanges. Okay, let me conclude. Why do people trap into this depression, lost their hope in life? I'll give you three reasons, right? Because in, in the final size, I will say this because of disbelieving. As long we are try seeking comfort, security, hope outside Redeemer, Creator, we will doom to fail. In summary, if you do this in contrary, as Jesus said, if you treasure heaven, if you are had a good vision in your worldview, if you had real only one must from beginning to end of your life, in every part of your life, you go up. I'm not saying you you physically not will we get in trouble. You will, but you always struggle in the between. So I want to, in the end, reverse this one. You need to start from the belief. It's the first core. Build up your life. Long to Him. Worship Him. Long you to this new master or old master. Okay, this is your choice. You have to go that one. Only resurrect the Christ. When we have His righteousness, we can worship Him. Blindness, He will take care of all your need, your friendship, your parental relationship, all those things. Deepest the need, He will satisfy. Second one, you expand to your life worldview. You know you belong to the kingdom of God. The last one, you'll remember, you'll belong to Him. Your value is more than you think. You are daughter and the son of the eternal king. So I will say you are a princess. You are a prince. That's how you are valued. You need to build this one. I end with this quote. In the, did you heard of John Donne? He is the Bishop of England uh, living in the 16th, 16th century, I mean 17th century. There is the London pandemic. He also be infected. I want to prepare you. You don't know you're young, you're not going to die, but prepare the worst. You will survive. You will be thriving. He said this one, because he's a pastor, so every day so many people pass away, the bell will run. So he's thinking, meditating, the bell ring for who? That's what he wrote. He's, uh, he's writing about the 33 meditation. This is on the 17. Maybe you can Google it. He said, no one is an island. Entire itself, every man is a piece of a continent as a part of a man. If the cloud be washed away by sea, Europe is the last, as well as if the pronominatory were, as well as if the manner of the die friends or the die owner, any man's death diminish me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never sent to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for those precious words. Help us to see the big three of our life whether it's our spiritually healthy, where is our treasure, how is our spiritual vision, who is our master. In this turmoil life, whether we can have real hope is depend on how we answer this three questions. Let us hope in him. He is our father. He is our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.